Hello YouTube, this is episode 31 of Let's Play Hattrick in San Marino within the Calvahale. First off, sorry about the delay for this episode. I was really hyped to, uh, to do this episode really because we have uh, pulled Sanati and really it's the start of the era of the cycle training here in Ninja Calvahale. The week before I was quite busy, uh, but I wasn't all that worried because I was just hyped to, to do this episode really. And uh, then I ended up getting rather ill last week, so I didn't have the energy to uh, record the, the episode and edit it. So here we are back again. Let's just have a look at Sanotti here because we pulled him and I'll bring up a screenshot as well so you can see exactly how he looked just before we pulled him. But uh, this is it. This is our hitter. This is the main man of the team now and he's already played his first match. He uh, debuted against Fender in Exil. Let's just have a look at that match as well because that was the league match last week and we got an absolute thumping but a good amount of spectators here. Uh, 33,000. Pretty good. Let's just have a look see how Sanachi did in midfield. He played two three stars. Yeah, not the most memorable uh, debut for Sanachi here. Right, so while we're at it, let's just have a look at some of the profit players that we have signed in order to uh, go along with the, um, the trainees. Oh, wait a second. Since we are actually in the second week of the cycle, we were able to pull Francioni as well. And as I mentioned earlier uh, in the series here, he doesn't have a spec. I decided that the heart, the homegrown heart, was more important than the spec in this case. And uh, he has... Uh, a little less relevant skill than um, Sanati as well, but he comes in with four defending, five playmaker, that's nine, then four passing, leaving him at 13 relevant skill, and then six scoring, so 19 summarized. But the heart, again, is quite important for our um, situation here. He'll play alongside Sanati in the midfield, and that also means that a midfield rating in the beginning of the cycle won't be particular beautiful initially. All right, so let's present the first profit player here, Marin Rajko. He's a header. He's uh, passable defending, passable playmaking, and inadequate scoring. And the idea is he can also follow Sanotti and Frangioni once we start training defending later in the cycle. So initially we're just training some playmaking in order to uh, get started, right? So the second profit player, that will be Petrai. Just as Raiko, he'll be able to follow because he's uh, basically a defender here. Solid defending, passable playmaking, and uh, weak passing and scoring. He's powerful, so as I said, he will be able to follow the other guys in the cycle as well. On to Nick Ottweiler. He's uh, a winger, and um, yeah, we'll be looking to build playmaking skill on this guy. He's also passable in defending, and we'll be looking to sell him once we move on to defending training, but uh, he should be able to give us some profit as well. Moving on to Monterio here, also a winger with inadequate playmaking and passable defending. He's a little older, um, as well as inadequate scoring. He's a header, by the way, and Ottweiler was still is quick. But I see. Raw winger here, brilliant in winger and passable playmaking he's unpredictable and a little older but um should be able to bring in a good buck as well and here is a familiar face ricky kick he was um, also a profit player initially uh while we were training winger and uh, he's brilliant winger you know you guys know that if you follow the the series this far inadequate defending inadequate playmaking and inadequate scoring he's a header obviously still um and the final profit player kill danielson which you also know because he was also trained in the club already passable defending brilliant winger adequate scoring he's unpredictable right so i've made this sheet to make an overview for you guys to see all of the players we're currently training in the cycle training playmaking and we'll have to juggle a bit since we have uh, nine profit players at this point Back in the youth squad, we have to make a call for the scouts to see if we can find the next big talent for Inter Calvahel. Um So let's see what Pietro has for us here. 16 years of age, poor playmaking, inadequate scoring, but 16 years of age. Andrea Micholoni, no thank you. Uh, let's see, Primo Roman, 16 years old, inadequate defending and weak winger. Pepe Salva, no thank you. Paulini, 15 years old. Overall abilities are weak right now, playmaking around four. 
Coach is playing right and he will reach his potential weak winger before you know it. 15 years old, Giovanni De Souza. We give this guy the chance in the youth team. Hopefully, he'll have two skills higher than winger. Since we already know the max of wing, we know that he can only have two skills above, um, what's it called, uh, weak. Uh, level 4, of course. Let's just have a look to see at the last youth game we played. The final piece of the puzzle is Camalini, and he's playing to six stars in the central midfield at this point. He looks like a happy fellow. Let's just have a look to see. He'll be solid playmaking by the time he joins the senior squad in 57 days. No spec so far. We're still hoping for him to reveal quick or header, just as long as he doesn't show us a typical specialty will be about that. Let's also just take a look at the finances uh, at this point, because building a cycle is also about the money. We have a cash reserve right now of 130 million Danish kroner. That's equal to 13 million euros. Really important to manage the finances quite well in a cycle situation, because we will need a lot of money to buy round, round up players and to pay wages further down the line. So uh, we'll have to be careful about this. And that's also the reason why we stick with the non-specialists, because we can uh, save a little wages uh, in that scenario down the line as well. Um, yeah, but still, we need to make more profit and we need to find a way to store money within the team rather soon, because we can only earn another 20 million Danish kroner and then the board will start hoarding our money because uh, yeah, they, they don't like us uh, keeping too big of a reserve, obviously, and not spending. The final thing to do today is, of course, to have a look at the league match we played against Google Trasses. And um, yeah, we get hurt a bit by the fact that our midfield is uh, kind of low. We are down to 3.25 for a low. And that's because of the young players we're training in the central midfield positions. Yeah, if we look at Sanati, he's uh, playing to three stars. If we just have a quick look at the table here, it shows that we can only finish fourth, and that's all right for this season because uh, we've actually started the, the cycle, and that's more exciting than the fact that uh, we can't really finish in any way other than fourth at the moment. But we will try to win the final games in this season, even though Titani FC will be tough not to break in the next round. That's all for this uh, episode. Thank you for watching. Hopefully there's great news to uh, report about our young trainees very soon. I hope you have a great week in Hattrick. And uh, if you like this content, please uh, consider subscribing and liking this video. Thank you.